I stood on the podium and my wildest dream had come true. I was now an Olympic medalist and I got to stand there with three teammates who had raced together for one common goal to represent Canada and get to do it with a medal around our neck. Now the way I started that day was a little bit different than the way it ended. I woke up, alarm goes off, and I wasn't feeling the best. I had started feeling ill a couple days before and it slowly, slowly was uh, progressing to something a little bit worse. I went to the doctors, which was on the top floor of our building, and I had asked them to check me out. And I immediately was told, you have a fever, we're not sure what else. Um, I had a lot of shortness of breath, a really bad headache, a sore throat, and I just felt more weak than I had ever felt before. So this was the day where I was supposed to be in perfect form, and this was the day that I trained four years for. So I was completely heartbroken, and I called my coaches, and with the help of the doctor, we were trying to figure out, you know, what was this day going to look like, and what was I going to be able to do? And we were lucky enough to, you know, go back and forth a few times and come up with a, a bit of a solution for the morning where we found that our team was deep enough that we could put some other girls that had raced really well so far at the meet and we were going to put them on the preliminary relay. So at this point they said, okay, Brittany, we'll sit you out for the morning and then we'll see you about the finals. And for me, you know, as much as, as I honored that, it was terrifying because there were a lot of things running through my head. You know, we could maybe not qualify for the finals. I could not be uh, chosen to swim in the finals. And I may not be, you know, healthy enough to swim in the finals. But this is a day that I will always reflect on and be really proud of, not even for the medal around my neck, but the way that I was able to handle it throughout. Um, so the rest of the day, I tried to completely shut myself, my brain off of swimming and shut my brain off of, you know, what was coming up. And so I laid it out. At this point, I had no idea if I was going to race or not, but I just had to prepare for the best um, and not really think about the worst. So I, you know, I tried to take as much rest as I could. I remember walking over to the dining hall. I got some food in me like I would have if I was finishing a preliminary session and heading to finals. So I got some lunch in me. I remember heading back to my room and I'm pretty sure I just watched like some sort of light comedy to make sure you know, I didn't want to watch the session. I didn't want to focus on too much. I knew I was sick. That part was obvious. Um, but overthinking things was only going to make it worse at this point. So I completely zoned off. I tried to make myself laugh. I tried to support myself, uh, surround myself with the people that really supported me and, you know, uh, made a few phone calls to talk to some coaches and really reassure me that I had been prepared. Um, and I remember getting ready for finals like I always did. Um, I, again, after I took a good rest, we went and got a bit of a snack. I went over to the pool with the rest of the girls. I had my cup of coffee like I always did, and I just tried to be my bubbly normally self. And no, I didn't feel good, um, but I didn't feel awful. I feel definitely better than the morning, and I think a lot of it was the process I took throughout the day. And I looked at you know the heat sheets, and when I got to the pool, I, I saw our team and our name and I knew that this was my chance. This was my opportunity, and I wasn't gonna let anything get in the way of that. And I think there's so many times in practice where I've swam through illness or injuries, um, and I'm still able to really, really accomplish some really great things. So I remember a lot of the times my coaches had told me, you know what, if you have this base of training and you're, you're confident in that, the day of, it doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what you're doing that day. It's all about the preparation you've done and the things that have led you up to that moment. So I really just harnessed down um, some of that confidence I had from previous days. And then, of course, just knowing that I had that base of training. My, you know, in practice, I had done millions of laps throughout the whole year. And this was only going to be four laps. Now it was going to be four hard laps, but it was going to be four laps that I was, I was so, so ready to do. And again, just kept every time I felt a little bit sick or I felt a little bit off, I just completely reset. I would look over to a teammate or think about the race strategy I wanted to take and just forget all about it. Um, I stood on the blocks. I remember walking out, we held hands and we were laughing and I just tried to remember what I love so much about this sport. And again, take away the bigger picture of this being my one shot in Olympic medal and focus on that, that detail of the fact that I was ready, I was there and this was supposed to be something I enjoyed and this was something that I prepared for. So I got on the blocks and again, 
I don't remember any detail about the race. I wish I could talk through details, but I remember that I dug as deep as I possibly can and I touched the wall and it wasn't my best swim ever, but it definitely was a good swim and better than I probably should have been able to go that day. And I was excited and I remember looking at the crowd and, and at my friends and at my teammates and you know what, we did it. And it again, it wasn't the fact that it was the medal, although now it is definitely something I reflect on, but my perseverance through the day, I mean, I could have easily woken up and said, you know what, I'm sick, I can't race. Um, and I know you people, some people are thinking, you know what, it's at the Olympics though, who wouldn't race? But there are some times where you physically just cannot get on the blocks. And so I think the way that I was able to trick my brain into thinking I was a little bit better throughout the day really helped me. Um, the next day, I literally barely stood on the blocks, but I did so as well because I knew, I, re I remember that little eight-year-old girl that dreamt of being at the Olympics. And I remember all the years that it took me to get there. And it may not be the best race of my life, but it was my opportunity and I was gonna make the most of it. So I stood on the blocks as hard as I could. I raced that day as hard as I could and I ended with a moment of glory and a, a medal in my hand that I will absolutely never forget.